So we're in the bathroom today and I'm going to be talking about things you should not do if you have redness or rosacea prone skin, like moi. Now I'm having a little ginger tea and I'm gonna be doing my makeup while I talk to you just for a change. And to set the scene, we're gonna do a little bit of new coat, water therapy, sandalwood, sage, yumminess, but note, no fragrance in the products I'm going to be using, hence I sent the air. So, things not to do when you have redness prone skin. Now, most of us with redness prone skin will learn this stuff the hard way. And I certainly learned that when it comes to certain ingredients groups, my skin will just say no. And after all, red is the color that says Stop. I've already got SPF on my skin, just so you know, so I'm not skipping. I've already got a bit of gossamer tint one on my face, flawless baby sunscreen on my neck, and I'm just running errands and largely working from home today, just wetting my beauty blender. So I'm just doing a little light base to even out my skin tone. That's the nature of redness prone skin. So I'm using a bit of Sculpted by Amy's Second Skin, mixing 1.5 and 3.5. I haven't yet worked out exactly what the right color is for me in that, but. The thing about redness prone skin, it is a bit two-tone anyway. There's pale bits at the edge, there's redder bits that look a bit darker in the middle. So actually custom blending with two shades isn't the worst way. So no, no, number one when it comes to redness prone skin, I think is knowing the ingredients that your skin doesn't like. Now for me, as I said, it hates fragrance with a passion. I mean, I remember rocking up to film for Dolce & Gabbana once with a bright red neck because whilst I directed a masseuse to not use fragrance products on my face, she had used it on my neck. And I was wearing a white dress, so. Not a good look for those fancy Italians. Anyway, for me, it's also essential oils. It's anything with an alcohol base that would be drying, that would tend to disrupt barrier function. So I don't use toners in my skincare routine. I don't really recommend them for patients. I don't think they're essential if your cleanser's doing what it's supposed to. Physical exfoliation, I just don't see a place for it with redness prone skin. You can do so much with chemical exfoliation in a much more controlled way. And yes, anything gritty, even a flannel, I just think use your fingertips guys, it's so much kinder. Now, on the subject of minimal physical interaction, I do think that beauty blenders are magic when it comes to applying base, just because, again, you're using pressure to push product in as opposed to a rubbing action, which will just tend to make redness-prone skin redder. I know it does for me. So I find this to be the best way, both in terms of the aesthetics, but also in terms of not dislodging your sunscreen underneath and just making the best skin-like finish, which certainly the Sculpted by Amy base allows for. Okay, now what else shouldn't we be doing with redness prone skin? I think the next thing is washing with hot water and general exposure to extremes of heat. For me, that means I'm really careful with saunas. I do love saunas, so it's a real pain point for me. Um, I might do five minutes every so often and just accept it. But in general, you don't want to be encouraging those little broken vessels that are already overly dilated and overactive in response to the environment. You don't want to be making them do more work. In the long run, that is likely to lead to a more fixed redness, so a permanent flush. Um, I'm just using a little bit of sizzly phytocern under my eyes. I do object to how expensive this is now. 73 pounds, it's shocking. <laughs> so yeah, very judicious use of saunas, but in general, if you can avoid things, you know, like Bikram, where you get extreme heat, I would. When it comes to what you use to rinse your face, I would say just keep it tepid. It doesn't have to be cold, but just keep it tepid. Nothing that promotes any more redness than you normally have. So the next thing to be wary of is spicy food. Now, redness is all about knowing your triggers, and for some people that won't affect you, but spicy food does contain chemicals that will promote vasodilatation again. 
um, a bit like booze, and I'll talk about that in a second. But um, yeah, so if you find that you're a spicy food person that gets aggravated, just, you know, manage it. Don't avoid things altogether if you really love them, but judicious consumption of curry. Now I'm gonna do a little tiny bit of brow action from Anastasia. Brow Wiz, medium brow. Beefing my brows up a tiny bit because they're a little bit sparse and just a little bit of elongation at the tail. I really need to make them match up a bit more. They're definitely cousins and not sisters. And then I'm gonna hold them in place with a tiny bit of refi. This is the brow sculpt with a very handy little shaping tool at the end. Good. On the subject of booze and alcohol in general, all alcohol tends to promote a little bit of flushing. It makes our, our blood vessels open, vasodilatation, but I think you have to be doubly aware of red wine. My own preferred tipple, so again, a bit like the sauna, something I, you know, I will consume carefully, but the histamine releasing aspect of red wine can also add to the flushing effect. So I definitely don't want photographs being taken on the night I'm drinking red wine. Now going in with a little bit of Westman Atelier Face Trace Contour Stick in Biscuit. I love this. Beautiful packaging, beautiful product. But in a similar vein, I mean I'm not terribly precise about this, we will go back in and aggressively blend it again. I am curious about Merit Cosmetics, which I keep seeing everywhere. Blend, blend, blend. I don't know. It just feels like it does a little something to me. And then a bit of Westman Atelier in Chouchette blush. Again, I think Merit does something similar. And I just pop that on the outermost bit of my cheek vein and then I will again aggressively. Blend. So yeah, alcohol, again, it's a bit like the spicy food thing. It is a trigger for most people, but it's also something you can probably manage. And I think if you're in a provocative environment, it can make matters worse. So maybe think about keeping the room a bit cooler if you're drinking wine. Um, I certainly do that during the day because I find that hot drinks can make me flush up. So I keep the office perhaps a tad uncomfortably cold, but it is better for my skin. If I leave a warm room by the afternoon, I tend to look really quite rosy. All right, so I might then think about doing a tiny bit of pinpoint concealing because I might have taken off the foundation a little bit where I want some redness um, covering up. And I tend to use the Surat um, palette, Perfectionist Concealer palette. And I have number two and I have Number one. One is a little bit cooler and paler, two is warmer and more yellow. And I just kind of depends on which part of my face I'm concealing. I've got a couple of little resolving blemishes on my right cheek, which I'm just going to hide. How's that all looking? I think it looks good. Now, on the subject of makeup, I do think a little care is needed because. You know, rosacea is a bit of a double-edged sword, right? You, you may want to cover it up, but I know there are days where I am a bit more free and easy about how pink my skin looks. There's other days when, if I'm filming, for example, I want to look a bit more immaculate. The comfort comes from products, of course, that are quite heavy coverage and they really stay put. However, of course, there is a challenge then in getting those off and I do think that if you overdo cleansing, it is one of the easiest ways to wind up rosacea and redness prone skin. And I keep mentioning the two because there is kind of a continuum. Double cleansing to me is one cleanse too much. And I really do think that if you're finding you're not getting your makeup off adequately with one cleanse, then you should think about pairing back your cosmetics or switching to something that are less long wear in nature. And I'm really quite avidly against long wear foundations as a general rule. I just think they cause trouble, whether it's aggressive cleansing that's needed to get them off in redness prone skin, making everything a bit more irritable and flary, or whether it's kind of having to use an oil to get your base off and then potentially promoting um, clog clogs in your skin and promoting breakouts. Either way, there's certainly no place for it in my skincare routine, nor has there ever been. Um, and if I produce a system for double cleansing in the Dr. Sam's range, then I'm probably, 
I don't know, <laughs> not myself. Keep cleansing simple and use makeup that works with your cleansing routine rather than cleansing to work with your makeup routine. Does that make sense? Now I am <laughs> applying endless amounts of flawless lip tint, which I love, I'm obsessed. We will do other colors eventually, but um, I selfishly looked after myself with the first color, but yeah, we've been nominated for Sunday Times Style Award with this, so I'm truly delighted it's such a simple but elegant little product. Now, if I want to be extra fancy, even though it's a sort of work from home kind of day, I will do a tiny bit of lip liner. Now this is well worn down, but this is a Givenchy lip liner. I think it's in beige mousseline and it's such a good color for my lips, almost invisible, but it's a nice textured pencil. Sometimes they're a bit too waxy and you have to get draw too hard and you get a hard line. This one is not like that. So this is really good with this particular lip tint because if, if there was too much pigment or it was the wrong shade, even by like a touch, it would look obvious against the lip tint. This just kind of blends in. It gives me a little bit more shape. And I draw in the corners, that little bit of extra definition, tiny bit on the cupid's bow and underneath, but it's not a continuous line. I think that's quite important, otherwise it looks done. Yes? Now, I did mention the SPF at the beginning, which is a given and which I'm really happy that I can usually convince most of my patients with rosacea that sunscreen is an essential part of their treatment. It's not just me being pedantic. But avoiding sunlight is a big part of your behavior when it comes to managing redness prone skin. UVA rays are a provocateur. I'm just doing a bit of sculpture by Amy Mascara. Love this brush. And yeah, UVA protection, which means a high factor broad spectrum sunscreen. You can't be relying on your SPF 25 and your makeup, it simply won't do. So do do the base layer. For me, I do Gossamer because it's a light tint which reduces the redness and I can reduce the amount of foundation I need. So as I was saying before, leaning into SPF, so I need less makeup, less persistent makeup, which allows me to cleanse less aggressively. Does that all make sense? Now, I have a few tiny lashes left in still. Um, I use an amazing lady called Mocha. And if you're in London, she's in Hanover Square and she's amazing. And I just do a little bit at the bases of the lashes. A tiny bit on the lower lashes. I hate mascara on the tips of my lashes. SPF 50, broad spectrum, every day. Coming into summer, it's really important you try and build that second application in, um, if you're gonna be outdoors at all. So being at your desk, in an office, you know, I would then just practice sun avoidance. You don't wanna be kind of applying goofy sunscreen um, on top of your makeup if you kind of come in, you know, with a proper office face. But for every day, I just use tinted sunscreen as my base. I use a very little, you know, cheap cosmetics, and then I will reapply after a couple of hours if I put it on in the morning, if I'm going out to do my errands or having a lunch. And that's the way I make multiple applications in a city environment work for me. Now, it's almost easier when you're at the beach, right? So you go equipped, you know you're gonna be putting on sunscreen multiple times, you've got your hat, you've got your sunglasses, you know, but um, yeah, it just requires a little work, I think, to make a city ritual work more effectively, but you can do it. Now, the next thing you might wanna think about with caution, and none of these are absolutes, but these are suggestions of things that might cause trouble. Um, I tend to recommend skipping facials altogether. Now, the reason for that is that rosacea and redness is best managed by what you do every day. And who's the best master of your skin? You are. So why you would devolve responsibility to somebody who probably doesn't know very much about your skin, they might know a lot about skin generally, but they don't know about the nuances of your skin once a month and you know what can you really achieve with a facial you know redness and inflammation is controlled by what you do every single day so to me and what i recommend to patients is it's simply too high risk a behavior to encourage and better that you work out the actives that manage your skin most effectively and you do that small steady incremental steps every single day now i'm going to put a tiny amount of highlighter on the cupid's bow because why not? I put a tiny bit in the inner corner of my eye. I just think that does a little something wide-eyed and pretty. This is a really nice one from Kira Vice. Yeah, I love these products. Again, these kind of go in this kind of sheer 
not very much at all, but just enough. And then the final thing to think about is managing your stress. Now, I'm actually gonna do a video soon on my well-being practices, which are, I guess, essentially focused at reducing stress to feel better, to feel happier, to feel, you know, more in control of oneself. Um, but I really do think that that is such a big part of managing any tendency to an inflammatory skin condition, whether it's redness, whether it's eczema, whether it's acne, all of it is helped by managing stress um, well. And I don't mean going on a, a spa vacation. For me, stress management is about your practices on a daily basis, much like your skincare routines. The two go hand in hand, because at the end of the day, that is what is going to help you feel better going about the thing that gives you life purpose in a way, really. So for me, that means I'm quite militant about my morning routine. That's the thing that gets me in the right headspace to win my day. And, you know, I'm, I'm gonna talk a bit more about that. But for you, that me might mean your sleep hygiene is the thing that takes priority. Because if you get a good night's sleep, then everything else is a piece of cake. We all know how important sleep is for us. So then that might be about, you know, getting off your screens at a sensible time before bed, reading a book, having a bath, you know, burning a candle, something that tells your brain it's time to wind down. It's certainly not sitting there scrolling on TikTok until lights out. So manage stress the way that gives you, um, yeah, that feeling that you can carry through into your day Ideally, every day, really. Stress management shouldn't be a sporadic or episodic thing. So those are the things I think you should approach with caution if you, like me, have redness-prone skin. Um, I mean, I do think that the don'ts in rosacea and redness are almost as important as the do's. And they certainly help me because they give me boundaries around what I should or shouldn't do with my skin. I know my skin very well at this point and obviously have a few issues, not just the redness to manage. So it does make you very controlling. I'm not the sort of person who go and stay at somebody else's house and use their skincare products without a care in the world. That is simply not me. I'm not that girl. But I think with a few, you know, gentle rules in place, it becomes much easier to navigate your skin and to get consistent glow and health which makes us feel so much better so i hope you enjoyed this visit to my bathroom and please come again soon thanks for watching bye for now